So it's Sunday afternoon. We made it to Boise, Idaho. I set up camp all by myself. First time ever. Ken is in the campground. And I should be seeing him any minute now. Today's bike ride is pretty uneventful. It's been most of it along Highway 20 and 26. Very busy road. Had a nice uh, quarter inch tailwind. And I'm finishing off the day with a nice bike trail here in Meridian, which is a suburb of Boise, Idaho. Hi, we're right there on the right. Good. And it's the first time I set up camp all by myself. And we're gonna hot tub tonight because they have an indoor swimming pool and a hot tub. But here's good old Boise for two days. After relaxing in the hot tub and swimming, we went to downtown Boise for a flight of ice cream and beer at Still, and then met Laura's cousin, Kevin Sakandi, and his wife, Nicole, and her mother, Julie, at a restaurant called The Fork. It's about 11 o'clock on Tuesday, and we decided to get me started just past Boise instead of going right from the campground just because the traffic was so crazy and drivers in the Boise area don't seem too tolerant of bicyclists so I felt pretty uneasy at times so I decided to start in this picked a spot called Orchard which is just outside of Boise forgot to switch it to car mode but we ended up driving for about 18 miles on this really rough gravel road and we ended up finding out that we were driving into an army installation where they do target practice and and uh, army tactical tactical practice and laser laser range and huh. so did you ever feel like you don't belong somewhere we have taken this detour thank you google and um, it is, I just really feel like I'm spying on my own country and that we really don't belong here. Well, the road got a little worse than I expected. Thankfully, the sides here are navigable. That's why I got this bike. So I can handle some roads like this. Got some, I got 2.75 inch wide tires, knobbies. They slow me down the highway a bit. I also have a thud buster in the seat, so if I hit a hard bump, it doesn't jar me quite so much. This is a, it's a, I bought this bike at REI. It's called a uh, co-op. ADV 4.2 and for this type of riding it works pretty good here we are Google trying to keep me off highways again <laughs> gotta tell you I love it this is probably my most favorite part of this ride so far is riding on these old roads this is part of the Oregon Trail Oregon Trail kind of, you know, back in the day, kind of spread out and various paths were, were cut. And this is one of them. It's still used by ranchers, and I suppose windmill people. As you can see in the distance, we got a bunch of windmills up there. So, still a use for them. Uh, looks like there's maybe a pipeline that runs along here. It's a slower ride, but I gotta tell you, I love it. The old road bike would never make it on this road. I'd have popped a tire a long time ago. All right, saying turn left, and I'm not, ugh, I'm not seeing a left turn. Oh, there is a left turn there. 
Whoa. Two miles on this. <laughs> ah! This is crazy. This is even a road. It's barely a cow path. I think it's hilarious that Google thinks this is a road. Highway 30, uh, and it says that the bridge is out in a half a mile. I think I'm gonna go check it out. Because sometimes I can get across stuff like this. I'd ride, I don't want to ride on the interstate. That is not something I want to do. Hi. How's it going? Yeah. All right, do you think there's a way I could get across here? Uh, no, there isn't. Because I don't want to take the interstate. I hear you, but yeah. Um, like if I, like, could I go down to the bank or something? What you could do is go down here to where the, on the other side of the water and take that road all the way down. Okay. And there's a crossing. See where that blue house is way down here on the left? Yeah. Uh, it's, there's a crossing right there, so you'd have to go there. So there's a little road here along the side? Yeah, I think you can take that. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're Appreciate it. Good Have luck. a good one. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Feels like I've been here before. Roads like this. Guy back there just told me I could take this little side road down here. And there's a crossing up here by that blue house. So I'm gonna give that a go. Not wanna ride on the interstate. <laughs> this makes it more fun anyway. I guess the Rails to Trails Conservatory is going to try to get rails converted to trails. It's a long-term project, but there's going to be a trail all the way across the United States. So that would be great for people that don't want to be on the road. Kind of like me. I'd rather drive on trails or really unpopulated roads. Cars kind of make me a little bit nervous. And this is more fun anyway, in my opinion. Turn left onto Proctor Street. Whoa! Ah, come on, baby. Yes. Okay, right angles. Uh, I'm going over here. Okay. And we made it. Back on the main drag. Hey, baby. That was my first real dog encounter. Thankfully, he was not too mean. He's a nice little lab. <laughs> Did not want to take my leg off at this point. Well, we're in Bliss. This is the town of Bliss.
Ethan's going to try something new today. He's going to bike on paved roads. Hey. hey, Morgan and Taylor. Why do you think they have corrosive barrels at a campground? Morgan, remember that time I tried taking a couple hour nap when we were driving and I parked by what you called a creepy truck? Well, uh, the only thing I can think of corrosive barrels is to hide body bodies on a campground. And look, almost no campers to be seen. Oh, there's one. It is Thursday of the third week of my bike ride. And Laura and I, is, Laura and my grand camping trip across the United States. Uh, has some words, has some thoughts. I don't know why I'm saying this. Some things I think about when I'm riding. So today it is, a hill before me is challenge. A hill behind me is relaxing. A wind behind me is encouraging, but a wind before me is demoralizing. Like little marks on my legs. Okay. No harm. Good. Work. There we go. All right, let's do a little riding. First time dropping my bike. Okay. almost 25 miles into my ride today and about a half a mile back well about five or six miles ago Laura sent me a text and said hey there's this old highway I think it might be gravel it might be just perfect for you and I thought you know what I'm on highway 26 the traffic isn't too bad the winds on my back I'm cooking along at average of 13 miles an hour why would I want to change that? Well, then I get to this intersection and Google says, hey, look over there, there's this gravel slash old highway. So what do you think I'm doing? So for the next five miles, I'm on this old highway. Every once in a while, you'll see some yellow marks in the middle where the, they used to have painted lines in the middle. Apparently, this was the highway that predated Highway 26. Yeah, right there, there's some yellow lines. So, half the highway has been reclaimed by the prairie. The other half is working on it. And I'll tell you what, there's no traffic on this road. And while I'm not cooking along at 13 miles an hour, I'm really enjoying my ride. So, thanks Laura, thanks Google. Uh, so far, I'm really enjoying this. Plus, I don't know if you can see this, but on the distance, there's a there's a snow-capped mountains over there. It's called the Sawtooth Mountains here in Idaho. They're absolutely beautiful. They're very rugged, jagged-looking peaks. Uh, been looking at those pretty much all day since I left Shoshone, Shoshone, however you say it, on my way to Cary today. So it's about a 40-mile ride. Nice and easy. Tomorrow, I'm gonna head up to, I think it's called Abco. And then we're gonna stop, we're gonna go back and see Crater of the Moon National Park. 
so that would be fun. So just a bouncy old highway. Nobody loves it anymore, except for me. So it's Friday, week three of our great adventure across the country. And today I'm riding from Cary, Idaho to Arca, Idaho, which is about 44 miles. And in between the two, there's really no towns. But there is an interesting uh, feature that I'm just starting to come across now. Give you my viewpoint. This is called uh, Craters of the Moon National Monument. I think there's a lava hole right there. That was cool. I think they're all over the place. Lava caves. It's on both sides of the road. But the actual monument place is about 15 miles ahead. You can kind of see how the lava flows happened apparently around 400 years ago so not that long really apparently there was multiple there's multiple uh volcanic fissures that caused this big wide area of of uh lava fields so uh, apparently sort of similar to what it looks like on the moon and they've actually trained astronauts here to know what it's like when they were on the moon back in the 60s and 70s. Quite, quite interesting. I'm in the process of going up this, um, I don't know if you call it a hill or mountain, but this big ass, whatever it is. And uh, one of the reasons I bought this bike was for this little tiny sprocket inside of here. It's a, uh, uh, it's a very low gear. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I forget how many teeth it has on it, but it enables me to go very slowly and grind up these gills, uh, gears, <laughs> grind up these hills very easily. But unfortunately, when I was pedaling up this hill, I'm still not at the top of it yet. This uh, shifter, even though I had it all the way in, kept me in this higher sprocket. And what I figured out is this, this thing is going to come loose. Somehow it's supposed to be about right there. So, so I got to try to fix it here on the road and make sure I don't damage anything in the process. So everything else looks like it's probably okay. I have to get my tool out. I carry this multi-tool thing with me. So, but I think it's just a, I think it's just a loose, uh, I think it's just a loose nut. So, uh, let's see. It's about halfway. It looks like it was down like that for quite a while because I haven't been in that low gear for a long time. So I'm gonna raise this up above the teeth just slightly. Loosen that up just a little bit. Okay. Bring that up. Let's do it about halfway. Get a little snugness on there. I got to hold. There we go. Hopefully that'll work. We're gonna try that out on the road here and see if it'll shift down. Oh. You also notice I put a yellow noodle on my bike. The reason I did that is because I've been getting brushed off the road or very close to it and I just don't like that. It doesn't feel very good. 
it makes me feel really nervous. So I put that yellow noodle on there to keep me uh, hopefully safer. All right, on the bike, high gear. I'm gonna shift her down to low gear here. Yep, looks like field repair worked on the smaller sprocket. Might need to get adjusted professionally here. This is called, what? Infernal Cone. We're gonna walk up to that, it's 6,180, <coughs> let's see. 6,181 feet above sea level. Well, that's pretty cool. You good? Yeah, I need to take a drink. 